they get a huge tax break in this bill. For the wealthiest individuals, they get an $80,000 a year cut in their taxes, what they call state and local taxes. Well, okay, more reasons to save America and kill the bill. Joining me now, Oklahoma Senator James Langford. Happy New Year, Mr. Langford. It's great to see you, sir. Thanks for coming hey, on. Great to see you again. Happy New Year. You know, your point, uh, we played a sound about the journalists getting half their salary paid. Uh, I know nobody offered to pay my salary. Nobody offered to pay half my salary. Why do you think that is, Senator Langford? I you mean, know, it's discriminatory. It was, a, it, it was a piece that was built into this bill that uh, kept it kept the message down to every different journalist in the country to say, write good, good stories about this because we're going to literally pay your salary or a portion of your salary over tax credits. I would assume that if this thing were to pass, that every journalist in America would have to begin every story with a conflict of interest disclaimer to say, my salary is paid for by the federal government. I need to say that before I actually do this. Uh, but it's not enough just to have NPR and PBS at this point, I guess. Now Democrats want to actually pay the salary of journalists across America to be able to save journalism by actually federalizing them. Uh, my, my simple statement in the speech, what could go wrong with free press uh, by having the federal government actually paying the salary of journalists? Uh, let's, let's keep free press the free press. No, it's a great thought. I bet you they probably wrote in some uh, to make sure nobody from Fox News gets any subsidies from the federal government. Just, just saying, I don't know that for sure. Your other point, though, is also terribly interesting. We've talked about it before, but you know, the, the, salt, the state and local tax deduction, uh, studies have shown only the top tier people are going to get that break from the two coasts, essentially, maybe a little bit in Illinois, but it's basically what the Northeast, California, and so forth. I mean, that's such phony baloney. The Democrats aren't the party of the working folks anymore. The Democrats are the party of the coastal elites, the academy, very wealthy people, you know, all these uh, uh, Silicon Valley billionaires and so forth. I mean, that's a big change in, in our, you know, professional time center. Don't you think part of it's Donald Trump, but I think it started even before Trump. The GOP is representing working folks. Yeah, it is actually the, the working folks that are across the country, rural America, folks that are working all over the country, uh, just getting up, going to work early in the morning. They're tired of paying for people that are illegally present in the country. Uh, they're tired of paying taxes while they're driving in at six o'clock in the morning into their workplace. Somebody is sleeping until 10 that's getting government benefits and entitlements. Uh, they're tired of that, but Democrats are not tired of pouring those things out. Mm -hmm. And one of the most expensive portions of this bill wasn't their child tax credit. It was the huge boon to millions Billionaires. Uh, that was the state and local tax deduction. If you're in a high tax state, those are the blue states, you get up to an $80,000 deduction on your taxes, where the federal taxpayers actually help offset your local taxes in New York and Illinois and California in those high tax states. You get an offset for that. That is, that is not fair to be able to go subsidize millionaires in blue states while those of us that are getting up early and going to work have to actually pay for people not working or pay for millionaires in high-tax states. And, you know, sir, also the, what, $12,500 credit to buy an electric car with an electric battery so long as it's made in a union state in a union shop. Right up to $800,000 per family eligible. And also, sir, the child tax credit. Now, I don't know what the final print is, and there still is no Senate uh, substitute bill, but the uh, benefits for the kids, which I think they've received enough, there's no workfare involved, and families up to $400,000 income would get that. In other words, these are middle class plus entitlements, government dependency yeah. plus entitlements. So if we, if we reverse back to the Clinton era, where Bill Clinton standing up for the American people, eventually, by the way, it took him a long time to get there, eventually to say, we're going to end welfare as we know it, that we as a country have learned that if you just send cash payments to people and they can make enough to have cash, they'll stay home uh, just to be able to get by. People make the logical choice to be able to spend more time with their family and doing other things they want to do if they can have enough uh, to be able to get by. That ended in the 1990s with Bill Clinton and that change in welfare that happened with Congress and the president agreeing to. It. This bill was designed to reverse that, to literally go back to welfare as we knew it and to start sending cash payments to people again in large uh, quantities and to be able to actually encourage people not to work. We saw that in the last year with COVID, that if you pay people not to work, they'll choose not to be able to work. That drives up wages, that drives up inflation. All the things that we saw last year with rapid inflation happen 
all were triggered on this huge entitlement that Democrats put in place last March. They wanted to double down on that and increase that again this year. It'd be even more toxic for the economy long term. And it doesn't help people rise out of poverty. Government benefits sustain them until they can get That's back to right. work, not to be able to keep them in that. Let's help people rise. You know, the, the ending workfare provision, I think really, Senator, was in the last March so-called emergency package. That's where that thing blossomed. Right. Because we had child tax credits in the Trump budget and the Trump tax cuts. But we and also it's still there had, now. We also, right, we had, we had workfare. And I've always given uh, Clinton credit for that. You're dead right. Newt Gingrich. And it, it worked. It worked spectacularly. They're killing, you know, the very fabric of America. I mean, this is a country that loves to work, the dignity of work. And it, not only do you climb the ladder of opportunity, hold your family together, et cetera, et cetera. But let me ask you one more thing before we lose you. Um, I've been talking to President Trump about the following. I think it would be great if senators, uh, Republican senators, I don't care, Democrats too, but if senators and House members made a big push, Senator Langford, to make the Trump tax cuts permanent because they were successful beyond anyone's imagination. They helped the middle and lower incomes the most, not like these Democratic bills, but make them permanent. That should be a GOP alternative and anybody else that, that wants to sign on. What do you think of that? I absolutely agree with that. With the Trump tax cuts that happened in 2017 and the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, when we put that through in the House and the Senate, President Trump's leadership to be able to do that, when we actually worked it through, that it dramatically increased our economy across all levels. Those at the lowest end of the income spectrum right. actually had the greatest amount of rise because of that, because we were encouraging work. We were incentivizing that. We were simplifying the tax code for individuals. Uh, that made an enormous difference. We saw businesses reinvest in what was happening in America. That's the way that it should be. Our tax code should incentivize more work and should uh, provide opportunities for folks on all levels. And that's what it did. And you're correct. The child tax credit was built into that tax cut and jobs oh, yeah. act that President Trump pushed we, through. We but it was designed it. if if you worked then you were able to right. do it. And if your, work, you. if your work only had to be like 2500 bucks a year, it's not like you had a full-time job to be able to do something. If you just showed some incentive that you actually got out and made some income during the year, then you would start to get some benefit in your taxes as well. That's the way that we should build it. Incentivizing work helps families rise out of poverty. You get the Nobel Prize for economics on the show tonight, Senator Langford. That's terrific stuff. No, you, we doubled the standard deduction. We doubled the child tax credit based on workfare. And and um, middle, middle blue collar and lower middle did the best. Unlike, and we got rid of salt. And unlike the Democrats' bill, the non-rich, I have nothing against rich people. Lord knows I want everybody right. to get rich. But the fact of the matter is the non-rich did much better, in some cases twice as better, as the top rungs did. And I'm just saying you had big growth, low unemployment, minority groups, right? They benefited enormously. Family incomes went up, what, $4,000 from... Kevin Hassett's forecast. You know, let's bring that back. It's going to expire next year. It starts to phase out the capital right. spending. So anyway, we don't have time, but hopefully you'll come back. We can talk some more, but maybe you can spread the gospel, make the Trump tax cuts permanent. Senator James Langford, Oklahoma. Thank you, sir. Happy New Year.